Just when you thought the Republican Party's open antagonism towards women and their reproductive organs could not get any more hostile. Hours ago, talk show host, former governor, and failed presidential candidate Mike Huckabee took it upon himself to mansplain to the women of America how one party wants to tame their wild libidos. Women I know are outraged that the Democrats think that women are nothing more than helpless and hopeless creatures whose only goal in life is to have the government provide for them birth control medication. Women I know are smart, educated, intelligent, capable of doing anything that anyone else can do. Our party stands for the recognition of the equality of women and the capacity of women. That's not a war on them, it's a war for them. And if the Democrats want to insult the women of America by making them believe that they are helpless without Uncle Sugar coming in and providing for them a prescription each month for birth control because they cannot control their libido or their reproductive system without the help of the government, then so be it. Let us take that discussion all across America because women are far more than the Democrats have played them to be. And women across America need to stand up and say, enough of that nonsense. Let us take that discussion all across America, Governor Huckabee. No, really, let us. Joining me now is the Lady Parts Justice founder Liz Winstead, <laughs> and from Los Angeles, actor and comedian Sarah Silverman. Sarah, I must ask you first, you are both very funny women. Part of what Mike Huckabee said today was hilarious, and part of it was downright terrifying. Your reaction to Uncle Sugar? Well, first of all, um, I love that band, Uncle Sugar. <laughs> I, I just, I'm stunned, but at the same time, you know, it's so bizarre. You know, he says he wants women to control their libido and the reproductive, uh, um, the re you know. The, 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 the reproductive cycle, the, the reproductive uh, system without the help I of I, too, government. would like to control my libido and my reproductive system. I plan on controlling it and being in control of it for the rest of my life. So maybe we're on the same page. Um, you know, I don't know what to say. I think that when people are, when it comes to abortion, when people truly believe that a, a fetus is a person, then I respect their right to express themselves. They should, they should, you know, it's, it's murder to them. But when a politician is, um, speaking on behalf of those people who are pulling their strings, you know, for their, for their purse and for their, uh, um, their, the betterment of their career, it's gross, you know? I, I, I'm just an actress and I, when I speak out politically, I, I, um, it does not help my career at all. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I will say, it may not, I don't know what it does to your career, and I think you are a hilarious person and a great actor, Sarah, but... You know, and, and I think that when we talk about sex, there's this narrative that they, they, we all jump on their bandwagon <clears throat> and their narrative, which is these women and their libidos. Yeah, so? Like, we have to stop feeding into this narrative that it's somehow awful to be a sexual being, to enjoy your sexuality, to want to be responsible with your sexuality. Yeah. You know what? I actually enjoy sex. And you know what? <laughs> I, I like to protect myself so that I don't get pregnant because I have looked inside myself for my many years on earth and said, you know what, I'd be an awful mother. <laughs> and so to prevent that from happening to the world around us, I think I'll use birth control. And oh, guess what? It's something that is good for the economy. You know, you listed off a, a myriad of things. If you don't look at birth control as a public health issue, as a public policy issue, people have sex every day. There was never a golden age of abstinence. That never happened yeah. in our world, <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, so so to, to, to act like sex isn't like some uh, sexuality and sexual humans are not part of a narrative and conversation in a healthcare plan, we're, they're just scary. I guess what they're just trying to prove over and over again is that their sex lives are so miserable that they're going to do everything in their power to just beat the drum of repression.
I don't know what else to say. Well, um, Sarah, you know, we were talking with a writer from Rolling Stone yesterday, and the tactic has shifted in, in terms of the issue of abortion, from focusing on the pictures of babies, uh, aborted fetuses, and, and, you know, partial birth abortions, to women and women's health, and making this an issue of women's safety. And there is a statistic that I think is incredibly relevant in that discussion. If you compare the safety of abortions to the safety of colonoscopies, colonoscopies are actually a lot more dangerous. For every 100,000 abortions, there's 0.67% mortality rate. There are 20 deaths for every 100,000 colonoscopies. Given those statistics, where's the great anti-colonoscopy lobby? This isn't, is it, really about women's health. No, it's all about, it's total hypocrisy. I mean, these are a people who are anti-big government, and yet they want to um, make laws about my vagina and what I do with my body. I don't think that would be tolerated if we started legislating um, men's bodies. I mean, the truth is, sperm has a sense of smell. They, that's, this is uh, something scientists have known for a decade. That means that sperm is life. And so, um, in my opinion, we've got to save those babies. If they're going to masturbate into a shower drain or a gym sock, we've got to stop them. That, and that, that is part of this campaign, Liz and Sarah, Liz, that, that you guys have launched, uh, V to Shining V, which is part of one's Lady Parts Justice and is a one-stop shop for suit shaming. Tell us, <laughs> tell us, tell our, our audience at home and abroad what exactly uh, the campaign is going to focus on. Well, it's sort of two parts. The, the website Lady Parts Justice is going to, is, is, a list, is getting the best comedians and writers and actors in the business. Lena Dunham, we have, um, we have Jemima Kirk from Girls, we have Sarah, we have um, Leah Delaria and, um, from uh, Orange is the New Black. All these people are getting together and we're going to make videos that actually look at local politicians and expose who they are because a lot of this legislation is happening on the local level. And, and in, the, in the awareness raising, we want to then in turn get this out there to the world and then on September 28th of next year, we want to do basically sort of like a rally for sanity that focused on voting and issues of women's health in all the state capitals across America and we're asking celebrities to go home, be part of it so that it's comedy, it's music, it's activism, it's politics and it's really bringing awareness to the legislation that's coming out of your state capital, your mayor's office, your city council so that we can say, hey, we're paying attention and if you don't vote, with women, we won't vote with you. You're on notice. Then there's also the, the sort of flip side to that, which is people like Mike Huckabee get to say what they do as a keynote speaker in front of a Republican conference, and it sort of goes, it, it, well, we're making mention of it, but, but there's no price to pay. There's no, there's no collateral damage for talking about women or shaming or humiliating them the way he and many other conservatives do when it comes to the topic of reproductive freedom. When, you, when you've talked about this issue, what's the reaction you get from women? Do they know this stuff is going on? Me? Um... You know, it's funny because I've been talking about it a lot, and um, depending on the crowd, of course, Sunday I did a fundraiser for women in Texas, and, uh, and you know, the audience was very, you know, aware of what's going on. But for the most part, you know, to talk about what's going on, I have to kind of let people know first, you know, before I can go into any comedy, I have to say... You know, much like voter suppression, this is this. A lot of this is underground. A lot of this is, you know, um, making abortion illegal is a bear for them, and they mm -hmm. know it. So instead, they're kind of, you know, knocking out our headlights and saying, "Oh, look, you've got a broken headlight. You you can't drive." And um, it's really scary in that way. And I think with Liz doing V to Shining V and Lady Parts Justice is just. The awareness is so important, you know, because people aren't, women aren't aware of what's going on um, that's going to affect them in major ways and is already starting to. 
I am really excited to hear your comedic response in the coming days and weeks to the character of Uncle Sugar and presumably his ska band, because that's what I think Uncle Sugar probably sounds like.